Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I'm the founder and CEO of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting LLC. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-step recovery program, and I don't claim to speak for any 12-step fellowship. My hope is that you will find my words helpful in some way, whether you're in recovery or not. This is episode 124, why and how to stop falling in love with people's potential. If you're a fan of this podcast and want to support it, please check me out on Patreon. If you're not familiar, Patreon is a platform created by creators for creators that allows them to be supported and rewarded for their work by their fans and followers. You can find me at patreon.com slash higher power coaching. Stop falling in love with other people's potential. This means not only in romantic relationships, but also other people that you're invested in for one reason or another. Maybe it's somebody that you hired as an employee or as a vendor for your company or just one of your friends. If you're anything like I was before I got into recovery, instead of dealing with the person who's in front of you right now at this very moment, the way they are, you focus on what you see in that person and the potential they have. I was in a meeting once when the topic was codependence. This was very early in my recovery. And somebody said that we fall in love with people's potential. And I was like, ooh, that's me. And it was like a knife to the heart. It really resonated me, but not enough to do anything about it initially. But it was something that really stuck with me to the point where I can still remember the visceral reaction I had when I heard it. It took some time for me to think about the concept of falling in love with people's potential. Like, what does that mean for me to fall in love with people's potential? Why might I be doing that? About six months into recovery, I had just enough understanding about codependence to be a little bit dangerous. And when I say that, I'm kind of joking, but not really. Because around that time, I thought that I wasn't codependent anymore, which is kind of hilarious now. And of course, I started dating someone, or at least I thought we were dating. Have you ever said that before? Um, By the way, if you say in your head, I thought we were dating, then that's not dating. Because you get to decide if you're dating someone or not. You don't have to wait for them to decide. But that's a whole nother topic. Anyway, this guy may as well have come right out and said to me, I'm not emotionally available. So he didn't say it in words, but he said it with all of the parameters he put on our interactions. Yet I pursued this relationship with him for a matter of weeks. Thank God it wasn't a matter of months like it had been in the past. Now, this dude had a lot of potential. He was very smart, very polished, well-dressed. He had a great professional reputation. We actually met in in a professional setting. He was good looking. He was polite. But I should have known by the fact that he was in his 50s and had never been in a really long-term serious relationship. So there must have been a reason for that. As soon as I realize this is really bad, this situation, and it's not working, I decided that I really needed to take a hiatus from dating. Somehow, I didn't think that the recommendation from pretty much every 12-step recovery program about not dating for the first year in recovery didn't apply to me. Around that time, I started listening to the dating coach, Matthew Hussey, and his compliment was an excellent, excuse me, his content was an excellent compliment to my recovery because he talked a lot about boundaries. He didn't very often use the word boundaries, but he talked about having standards in your life and then communicating those standards to other people, which is what boundaries are. You have standards for your life and you communicate them to others. Matthew said this thing that really struck me, and it was this. You shouldn't have to time travel to date someone. In other words, if you're with someone and they're not dateable right now, then don't date them because right now is when you're dating them. 
What matters is whether they are the person that you want to be with right now. And that really helped me a lot. When it comes to falling in love with people's potential, that means we're looking at the person as if they're a project and as if it's our job to be the project manager for their life. If someone has lots of potential, they might live up to their potential one day, but maybe they won't. And here's the thing, it's not your job to get somebody to live up to their potential. It's your job to make sure you live up to your potential. That is your job. But you're not gonna be able to do that. You're not gonna be able to live up to your own potential if you're putting all that energy, time, and effort into pushing someone else or pulling someone else across the finish line or forcing them to live up to what you believe is their potential. This is just another example of where keeping the focus on yourself is really important. So it's not your job to help someone live up to their potential. It's not your job to nag them or push them or give them opportunities or send them educational materials or recommend programs for them so they can live up to their potential. Now, I know this is particularly difficult when it comes to young people. I don't have children myself, but I do have a niefling and a nephew who are both young adults, and it is heartbreaking to watch the two of them who are extremely intelligent, very creative people with enormous potential, not really doing much with their lives. They're not contributing to the world in a way that I would like them to, and they're not interacting with the world in the way I would like, but it's none of my business. I remember talking to my therapist a few years back about them. She said, Barb, would it be so bad if they meander through their lives and then got into the into recovery at the age of 52 the way that you did, and then their lives were deeply and profoundly changed the way that yours was? And that really struck me because I wouldn't have it any other way. Here's the thing, everybody has their own path. It is not up to you to decide what anybody else's path is. Every single person that has ever been born is teeming with potential. I read this saying the other day, the acorn has potentially many oak trees in it. I hadn't heard that one before, but I had heard that you can count how many seeds are in the apple, but you can't count how many apples are in the seed. There's the potential for an entire orchard in one tiny apple seed, but we don't know if that particular seed in our hand is ever gonna grow into even one tree. Something else that's coming to mind right now that has to do with potential is that I heard someone say in a meeting one time that she decided that her amends to her brother was going to be that she would lower her expectations of him. And I was like, holy shit, that's what I need to do for my brother because my brother has an enormous amount of potential. He's one of the most intelligent people I have ever met in my life. Well, at least he's full of tons and tons of knowledge. He has deep knowledge of science, of history, of politics, and he's able to take a very broad and long-term look at the human race and history and all that sort of thing. However, he's not really putting that potential to use in the world, and he actually suffers because of that. Now, a lot of my difficulty in my relationship with my brother was that I expected him to live up to his potential, or at least my idea of his potential. And I used to give him all kinds of unsolicited advice about what he could do for a job, where he could go, what books he should read, and all that shit. And when I got farther into recovery, I was finally able to let that go and understand that it wasn't my business. But when I heard that woman say, that her amends to her brother was to let go of her expectations to him. I was like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. 
So I've lowered my expectations of my brother and it might be helpful for you to lower your expectations of the people around you who are not living up to their own potential or at least your idea of what their potential is. What I can tell you is this, when we're trying to protect other people from making mistakes and we're trying to push them forward, not only are we not taking care of ourselves and keeping the focus on ourselves, we could potentially be keeping them from circumstances that are gonna cause them to grow the most. I know that for me, all of the things that have caused me to grow the most in my life have been things that have been very difficult for me. And this brings to mind my philosophy about obstacles. They're really detours in our lives rather than obstacles. They're not blocks to me getting where I want to go. They're signals from the universe to say, don't go that way, go a different way. Let me be clear though, there's a difference between helping out people who have high potential, who have asked you for your assistance and who follow through. I believe it's very important to give back what was given to me. This is why I give service and recovery. It's why I do this podcast. It's why I'm a coach, but I no longer am going to be dragging anybody over the finish line. I'm no longer going to help somebody more than they are willing to help themselves. They have to meet me at least halfway. In fact, really more than halfway. I've had a number of young people over the course of my life that I started to mentor and I told all of them, I'd be happy to mentor you, but you have to take the initiative. You're the one that has to call me on a regular basis. And of the half or dozen or so of them, none of them continued to follow through. I offered to pave the way for them in regard to various things, but they didn't take me up on it. Now, if I had been focusing up on their, focusing on their potential, that would have meant that I was calling them all the time and saying, why don't you get back to me and you need to follow through. But here's the thing. I was too busy and I am too busy living my own life. And that is what you should be doing, dear listener, keeping the focus on yourself so that you're busy living your own life. And that way you won't have time to fall in love with someone else's potential. Talk to you next week. That's it for today. If you've been finding this podcast helpful, please consider a donation to ensure I can continue. To choose the level of support that feels right to you, go to patreon.com slash higherpowercoaching. Please also review it on Apple Podcasts, like and subscribe to it on your favorite podcast outlet. I'd really appreciate it and it helps others to find the podcast. Now, if someone in particular came to mind when you listen to this episode, please share it with them. And don't forget, I'm on Instagram at Higher Power Coaching. I run group and private coaching programs on creating healthy boundaries. And if that sounds like something that would interest you, head on over to barbchat.net where you can get on my calendar for a free 30-minute better boundaries consultation. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change. If that's you, then go to barbchat.net and get on my calendar. My goal with all of my work is to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. Remember, it's never too late to recover. No one is beyond hope and healing is possible. Thanks for listening 